Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we delve into the turbulent tale of a man who, after losing his wife in a tragic accident, uncovers her secret life of infidelity and deceit. So grab your snacks and settle in, because you won't want to miss this gripping tale of love, betrayal, and the complexities of grief. Now let's get started. I want to told my kids their recently deceased mother cheated on me. The wound's still a bit fresh. A month ago, my wife of 22 years tragically died in a car crash. Scarlett was one of those drivers who loved to stare into her phone, and unfortunately, this bad habit caught up with her in the last week of January. I was pretty devastated when the police showed up at my door and told me she had a fatal accident, and I wanted to honor her somehow. At the time of the accident, I had no idea she was having an affair. The last four or five months I did notice she was pulling away and our intimacy decreased, but I thought this was just something that happened to couples after 20 years, so I didn't pay much mind to it. But, at least from what she told me, Scarlett started to get into writing. She was constantly on her laptop, typing away at all hours. She told me she was working on a fantasy book, hopefully the first of a series. When I asked more, she said it was about a fantasy world where a super advanced human race appears and interacts with, with orcs and elves and magic with laser guns and high tech. It sounded very cool, and Scarlet promised as soon as she had a first draft she liked, she would let me read it. I decided to honor her by getting the draft of her book and hiring a writer to clean it up and publish it with a novelty press. I got on her laptop and, no book, no sign at all. I opened her Chrome, thinking she might have written it in Google Drive and saw a bunch of pinned tabs. One was a Facebook Messenger tab with a ton of her messages with a man, David. I have no idea who David is, never met him, but they talked about meeting up, exchanging photos, everything. The last message David sent her was two days before Scarlett's accident, the two saying they loved each other, and him saying he was going on a business trip to Germany. The messages between Scarlett and David have shown they had met up at the house more than once, so I already had the locks changed. Not sure if David is back yet, and frankly don't care if he is. I was thoroughly devastated. She did have a Google Drive tab, but in her drive wasn't a book about elves vs. Vulcans, but a shared document with David. The document was a plan she and David drafted on how to divorce me, turn the kids against me, and take our home and as much money as possible. One thing she noted was she has been taking money, a few hundred a month, and putting it in a separate account. I got the bank thing sorted out and the money in the kids' college account. I've also been going to therapy twice a week now. It is hard to be mad at someone dead, especially someone everyone else in your life is grieving and praising as a wonderful wife and mother. I have asked my therapist if I should tell my kids about what Scarlett has done and what she was planning to do. My therapist cautioned me about this. He said that they just lost their mother, and being told this would be condemning her memory damnatio moria. Maybe now is not the time, but I think eventually would be a time for my kids to know. After hearing this, we can feel the situation places OP in an excruciating moral and emotional dilemma. On one hand, he grapples with his feelings of betrayal and the stark contrast between the public's perception of his wife as a loving partner and mother and the reality of her actions. On the other, he faces the challenge of deciding whether to share this painful truth with his children, who are also mourning their mother's death. His therapist advises against revealing this information it may damage to the children's memories of their mother, and we also think it too. So, we want to hear from you. Have you ever found out something surprising about someone after they passed away? How did you handle it? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's talk about it and help each other through tough times. Here's what top commenters had to say about this one. Now is definitely not the time to burden them with that. An interesting perspective from a Reddit user. The right time to burden them with that is never. What purpose would it serve? Let them have good memories of their mother. Take it to the grave. Another Redditor shared insight and empathized. I lost a parent in my teens. That's definitely not the time to spoil their life further if she was a good mom. You should catalog it all and put it away where they can't find it. Once they are on their way to adulthood, say 25 plus, you could share it if there is actually a reason to. Also, it is normal for the children to somewhat idolize their mom, meaning looking back with nostalgia and positive memories. Sorry for your double loss of your wife and the belief she was the love of your life. That's harsh. As another member chimed in. Yeah, don't do that. Find someone else you can confide your feelings to. Your kids have a right to know this eventually, but not now, not for a long time. A Reddit user offered advice. You would be the a-hole, but I would suggest finding out who this David is and making sure he does not show up in your lives, such as at the funeral or anything. Sounds like they had some big plans involving your kids and who knows what this piece of crap could say. Another said, 
There is no need to tell them now. Let them grieve. The truth will come out eventually. Here's the first update. Some things have happened since last time. To answer some questions, I have gone to the bank and got control of Scarlett's account and transferred the money into a savings account for the kids. Also, my kids already suspected. Tuesday night, my eldest Alessandra said she and my son Alexander had something to say to me. They sat me down in the living room and Alessandra said we think mom was cheating on you. They both said they weren't sure, but it was eating them up seeing me in extreme grief the past month and they thought I should hear what they suspected. They brought up how Scarlett was always away and when she was at home, she would make strange observations about me. Stuff like, isn't it weird your dad's working late this week? This is one of those seeds Scarlett mentioned in her document that she wanted to plant in the kids. Alessandra said her suspicions went high the week before the accident when she got home from school and saw a strange jacket on the coat hook by the front door. It wasn't any jacket Alexander or I had, so she was very suspicious about it. I told both my kids that I didn't tell them, but I found evidence on their mom's computer when I was looking for the book she said she was writing. Alessandra wanted to see the evidence, but Alexander said he didn't want to think or talk about mom for a while. I shared the info with Alessandra after she insisted she already suspected her mom and was ready for it. It feels good to now have someone close who can talk to me about this beyond my therapist. Yesterday afternoon, I was home alone when I heard someone jiggling the back door's knob. I went to the door and saw a man I never saw before trying to use a key on the lock. I told him to step back from the door and he almost jumped. I opened the door a crack and asked him who he was and what he was doing in my backyard. It was David Scarlett's affair partner. He told me that he worked with my wife and he had just gotten back from a trip and saw Scarlett die on social media and he and Scarlett were starting a business. They had a business bank account with his investment money in the business and he was wondering if I could help him get the business funds transferred over. I looked him straight in the eye and said I was at the bank. Scarlett didn't have an extra business account and I had no idea what he was talking about. David also said that he wanted to check my wife's things for any sensitive business documents. I said he was a stranger and wasn't welcome in my home, especially since he tried to enter without permission. David looked defeated but did suggest he would consult with a lawyer about his sensitive business documents and business funds. Gosh, what a wild ride this story has been. First off, big props to Alessandra and Alexander for stepping up and telling their dad about their mom's possible cheating. That takes guts, especially during such a rough time. Their support for their dad is heartwarming and shows how close-knit their family is. And then, out of the blue, comes David, Scarlett's affair partner, trying to worm his way into the family's life. Can you believe the nerve? But the dad isn't having any of it. He stood his ground and sent David packing. Good for him. Through all this craziness, it's nice to see the dad finding comfort in his kids and therapists. It's a tough situation, but he's handling it like a champ. Now, here's a question for you guys ever been in a situation where everything just goes haywire like this. How did you deal with it? Share your stories with us in the comments. Let's chat about life's ups and downs. Here's what top commenters had to say about the update. Holy crap, I'm so glad you changed the locks. I can't believe he had a key to your house. Ata Redditor proposed a solution. Change the locks if you haven't already very sorry about this glad your kids suspected and are handling it good luck to you all another frightened what the heck he had a key to your house i suggest you find out his wife's socials and send her the business documents the reddit user with a strong opinion yeah no doubt that david a fitting name wanted to find and destroy anything incriminating before you did and tried to blackmail him as thinking you should change your locks now as you didn't collect the key from him but good for you for refusing to allow david chuckle into your home Boy, he had a lot of nerve. Not long after, OP provided another update. Had to clean up some situations. Just remembered this existed, so I'd pop in to update. Some people were upset with my comment about my wife's bad texting habit of catching up with her. I have to admit, emotions were, are, and probably still will be high for quite a while regarding her. It was pretty callous to say, I admit. The locks were changed long before David showed up when I saw, based on their conversations, that he was at the house several times. Also, the back door is in the same room as the home office, so of course I could hear someone trying to open it. I've had a credit check done on Scarlett and checked with all local banks. I got the only account she had. I've been going through our financials for the last year and there were several withdrawals by her, a few hundred here or there a month, which it appears were deposited into the getaway account. The getaway account did have an extra approximate two grand in it versus what she took out. Could it be David's money? Can't be sure. Scarlett hasn't worked in two years. 
We reached a level of financial stability to where Scarlett wanted to retire early and focus on being a fantasy writer. No idea where she met David, and honestly, it's beyond the point of caring right now. I didn't recognize David from the photos because most of the shots were not facially focused, sorry to say. I did take some advice and hired a PI to investigate David. He is a 40-year-old married carpenter and father of three. Lots of people suggested I destroy his marriage or sue him, but honestly, this whole ordeal has me exhausted. I am just happy to have Alessandra and Alexander with me. Still go to counseling every week and the days are getting better. Now for the update. In Scarlet and David's master plan, one of their ideas to alienate my children from me was to create a narrative of me cheating. They put screenshots of various escorts from some sort of website in the document saying they could easily pay one to claim I was sleeping with her. Scarlet picked a rather large woman who looked like she had some rough years and seemed gleeful at the idea of making the children think I slept with that woman over her. Surprise, Sunday night who was knocking at the door but that woman. She immediately tried to cause a scene and tried to make adulterous claims but I simply said did David last name send you and she immediately left without a word. David called me later that night and said he wanted his investment money and that he knew how to hurt me. I told him we were on a recorded line of bluff and he was silent before saying wrong number and hanging up. Might need to start looking at a receiving office now. In the update, it's a lot to digest, but it's evident that OP is tackling each hurdle with resilience and determination. Confronting betrayal and threats head-on isn't easy, but OP is facing them with courage and taking measures to safeguard yourself and your family. Your strength in the face of adversity is truly commendable. Here's what top commenters had to say after the second update. You should just call him out. Why let him continue this charade? It's disrupting your peace. Just tell him I saw the file. I know everything. That's how I knew you sent the escort. Although what purpose it serves now, besides pissing me off enough, I tell your wife about the affair. I don't know. I have the evidence saved. My kids know their mother was cheating. If you keep pursuing this, I will take you to court, press charges, and sue you for harassment. Threatening bodily harm and alienation of affection. Don't try me again. As a user on Reddit voiced their thoughts. Blows my mind that you're not destroying this guy's life. Stop turning the other cheek. Defend your family. The guy is putting everyone in danger. What the heck do you think would happen if he actually broke in and found your son or daughter there? Get a grip. Kick this crap into his backyard. Get the police involved. Another shared helpful tips. Honestly, I'd send copies of everything to David's wife. Not out of pettiness or revenge, but just to force David's attention off of you and your family. I'd also speak to a lawyer and the police about what legal options you have. Otherwise, he'll continue to bother you guys. A rational person would have walked away after his death. He instead didn't call off the escort and tried to break into your home. I would be concerned about him escalating. One Redditor argues, You're the a-hole for not blowing this guy's life up. You're grieving and he sent a prostitute to try to discredit you to your kids. Why? Just to ruin your life. Let his wife know, let his kids know, sue this a whole. As a thoughtful commenter on Reddit advised, Hey, so you need to listen. Tell the guy's wife. That way he will have something else to focus on instead of bothering you any longer. And after the stunt with the escort, he deserves it. You're pulling your punches. Stop doing that. This Reddit user highlighted an important point. Just send the file to his wife. She deserves to know the truth. Don't you wish someone had told you the truth before the accident? As this intense story comes to a close, we're struck by the incredible resilience and courage shown by our OP faced with deep betrayal and a tangled web of lies following his wife's sudden death, he has shown remarkable grace and strength. With the support of his children, who bravely shared their suspicions and guidance from a therapist, he's begun the tough work of healing and rebuilding his and his family's lives. Looking ahead, it's crucial for him to keep up the open communication with his children. This will not only strengthen their relationship, but also prepare them to face future challenges together. Follow the community's advice is good, and thanks God he did it. Now let's dive into our next story. In this deeply personal story, OP opens up about his five-year relationship and the unsettling gut feeling that led him to hire a private investigator to uncover the truth about his fiancée's mysterious girl's only trips. What he discovered shattered his heart and left him grappling with conflicting emotions. Let's jump into it. I hired a private investigator to catch my cheating girlfriend. Now she wants palimony for the breakup. Hey everyone, long time lurker, first time poster here. I never thought I'd be the one to spill my story on a confession subreddit, but here we are. To cut a long story short, my fiance and I have been together for five years. 
Every year, she goes on this girl's only trip with her close friends. Something in my gut had been bothering me about these trips. Maybe it was the slight changes in her behavior afterwards or the cryptic conversations I'd overhear. Instead of directly confronting her, I did something I'm deeply ashamed of. I hired a private investigator to watch her during her recent trip. I got back the results a few days ago, and as much as I regret violating her privacy, my suspicions were not unfounded. The private investigator presented evidence of her being unfaithful. It shattered my heart. Now I'm caught in this storm of emotions. On one hand, I deeply regret snooping and not trusting her enough to talk about it. On the other, the betrayal from her side feels even more significant. I love her, but I can't see a future together anymore. How do I even approach this situation? Do I confess my snooping or just end things without revealing the reason? Any advice is welcome. This story really hits close to home, doesn't it? It's a reminder of how fragile trust can be in relationships and how heartbreaking it is when that trust is broken. It's tough to navigate through feelings of betrayal and uncertainty, especially when you're caught between wanting to confront the truth and fearing the repercussions of doing so. We think many of us can relate to the struggle of trying to balance our own emotions with the desire to do what's right for ourselves in our relationships. The top comments gave fairly cut and dry advice. Just tell her you know. You don't have to give details. She's not going to tell all her details. Be glad you didn't marry her. This Reddit user brought a new angle to the conversation. She's been cheating on you, then coming home to you like nothing happened. Effectively stealing your time away from you to be happy building a future with a woman you'd actually want to be with forever. And you're mad your intuition saved you since she wouldn't. Play it smart. Don't let her know what's up until you have all your ducks in a row. Who she is and who you thought she was the version you love are not the same. Who you love right now does not exist. That's what you're grieving. Not the shell that looks like her that you need to get out of your life. Other Redditors shared insight. I would definitely just go with an I know what happened and maybe one undeniable detail and give her enough rope to hang herself. I'd also let the partners of the other women on this trip know what they've been getting up to. At the very least, there is open collusion and infidelity going on. A viewer on Reddit shared their own story. On a side note, a few years back at one of my customers at my job, a dude got fired not sure of reason or pretext as I only sort of knew him in a couple of weeks after this. It came out that this guy was seriously into some kink stuff, no biggie in and of itself. However, he had involved no less than three other dudes that worked there and a couple of chicks as well. Apparently something got filmed and on the net. But as time went by, I came to understand that basically this guy had the gift of charisma and would talk his coworkers into his various sex orgy swinging activities. Dude wasn't particularly great looking and had a reputation as a heavy drinker, but was getting these coworkers to join in his fun. The most bizarre thing I have heard of, to be honest. The saga continued with a second update eight days later. Hey everyone, I've received many messages asking about the situation, and I thought it was only right to keep those who cared in the loop. When my fiancé returned from her trip, I tried my best to handle things maturely. I gave her a chance to be honest, asking if there was anything she wanted to share about her trip. Instead of coming clean, she gaslit me, making me question my own perceptions and reality. Having the evidence I had, I confronted her about the affair. She was taken aback and immediately asked how I knew. I told her the truth that I hired a private investigator. I didn't want to falsely accuse any of her friends, as some of you suggested, even though honestly, part of me was tempted. She was furious. I've never seen her that angry in all our years together. Additionally, feeling it was the right thing to do, I shared the evidence with one of her friend's boyfriends so he could be informed and consider getting tested, if necessary. It was clear to both of us that our relationship had reached a breaking point. We broke up right then. Despite it being my house that I financially covered for us, I left and checked into a hotel, giving her space and asking her to pack her things and move out. We didn't communicate for a few days. When she finally reached out, she expressed a desire to talk and perhaps find a way to mend things. But the trust was broken, and I couldn't see a future for us. I told her no. And now the part one didn't see coming. She's considering pursuing palimony payments. For those unaware, palimony is financial support provided to a partner in a non-marital relationship after separation. I've been informed that due to the relationship laws in our state, this could very well be a real concern. I've initiated the process of hiring a lawyer. During our relationship, I took on the majority of the financial responsibilities, including the mortgage. We had an unspoken understanding my money is our money. Her money is her money due to our significant income differential. I never thought that my generosity would come back to haunt me. There it is, the update many of you asked for. 
I wish I had a happier conclusion to this chapter, but life has its twists and turns. It seems she might have the upper hand in this final act, but I'm hoping for a fair resolution. Thank you for the support and advice. It has really meant a lot. Wow, this update really hits hard. It's heartbreaking to see how things unfolded after OP confronted his fiance. The gaslighting and the ultimate breakdown of trust must have been incredibly painful to experience. And now... To add legal complications on top of everything is just a lot to handle. It's clear the OP is going through a tough time, but their strength in standing up for themselves and seeking a fair resolution is truly commendable. Commenters were shocked to hear about palimony. I hope that the palimony does not materialize. It may not feel like it, but it's better to know now rather than a few years and kids potentially down the road. Good luck to you. A thoughtful response from a Reddit user. I have never heard of palimony. You made the right call, though, about breaking up with her. Should have gone with no contact. Oh, Redditor empathized. The audacity of the girlfriend shows she has no shame at all. Best of luck to you. A Redditor sharply criticized the OP girlfriend. She revealed her character all around. Thankfully, you didn't marry this trash. It's an interesting perspective and a story from a Reddit user. Hmm. Actually, now that you mention counter-suing for legal fees, OP might just tell her that directly. It might call her off her absurd witch hunt for money. If she has nothing to lose and everything to gain, why not go for it? Sometimes certain lawyers will even agree to work on the case for free if they feel they can win it and only get paid when they win. If OP tells her he'll be counter-suing for legal fees and that his significantly higher salary has afforded him a very expensive lawyer, suddenly there's a financial punishment if she loses. It might get her to drop the whole thing before it even starts. Good luck, OP. And as far as your guilt goes, don't let yourself feel it. You don't deserve to feel guilty at all. I may catch some crap for this, but I've always said the ends justify the means when it comes to cheating in relationships. I too have found myself doing unethical things in order to confirm infidelity. I'd have felt a little bad if she had come up clean, but sure enough, she came up dirtier than that pair of undies in gym class that sat all year in that one locker no one used. I was completely justified in my actions. If I hadn't taken matters into my own hands right now, I'd be married to a no good rotten cheater. I don't care what anyone says. Anything is better than being innocently tricked into that situation. As we wrap up these stories, we're left with a mix of feelings, sadness, disappointment, and a bit of hope. They remind us that relationships can be messy and complicated, but they also show the importance of standing up for yourself and seeking support when things get tough. Even though the endings may not be what we wanted, the courage shown by the main characters is something we can all admire. They face their problems head on, and that's worth celebrating. As we say goodbye to these stories, let's remember to be kind to ourselves and to each other. Life may throw us curveballs, but with a little resilience and support, we can get through anything. If these stories resonated with you, don't forget to hit that like button and share them with anyone who might benefit from hearing them. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to stay updated on more thought-provoking content like this. Your support means the world to us.